In the last video, we built the structure of our financial model. Now, the next step is to bring it to life by diving into the historical financials. At JP Morgan, analyzing past performance was the key to making accurate forecasts. I'll show you how to dissect the data to set a solid foundation for your projections. Hello friends, welcome back to Wall Street Mojo. We will continue our discussion on creating the financial model in Excel step by step. So in our previous video, we completed the first step where we created the structure of the financial model. And you remember you have downloaded this uh, template uh, that is this uh, financial modeling template without solutions and you also have the case study with you, right? So we already did the first part where we Assume that we have the historicals in place and it has to be in a very standardized format like the income statement, balance sheets and cash flows, etc. Right. So with that in mind, let's now look at the second step. And what is the second step in financial modeling? Second step in financial modeling is analyzing the historical financial statements. Now, this is super critical because on the basis of what you see in the historicals, basically you are going to project the financials of the company, right? So in order to analyze the historical financial statements, let's go back to this template, okay? So first thing first, when it comes to analysis part of it, we start with the income statement and we'll try to figure out, you know, how much has been the profitability of the company, you know, what are the costs, what are the margins? And then there are analyst friendly uh, you know, terminologies like the earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization, that is EBITDA. And then we have EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. And then we have earnings before taxes and net income. So from profitability point of view, we look at various uh, margins, right? One would be the gross margins. Then we look at the EBITDA margins, EBIT margins, EBT and net income margins. So let's do that. I'll just scroll down, okay? And I'll write all of these here gross margins okay then we need EBITDA margin I'll come to the calculation part of it but let me just write it down EBIT margin then we have EBT margin earnings before taxes margin and then we have net income margins okay so these margins will help us understand how the profitability of uh, Apex solution has been historically okay so how do you go about calculating the gross margins the gross margins is nothing but you know total revenue minus total cost that operating cost which can be directly associated right so with that we have the gross margin in absolute amount so for actual one we have 13000 million dollars right so a gross margin would be when expressed in percentage it will be 13000 divided by 25500 okay so let's now calculate the gross margin so gross margins will be equal to 13000 divided by 25500 for actual one. So it comes out to be 51.0%. I'll copy and paste it for the other two years as well. And we see that it's 50.9 and 50.8% for the other two years, actuals two and actuals three. Now let's look at EBITDA margin. So EBITDA margin is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization divided by total revenue. In fact, all the margins here, each of these numbers will be divided by revenue so that we know how is the profitability at that level. So let's look at EBITDA margins. EBITDA margins will be equal to EBITDA is 9000 divided by 25500 and we get this as 35.3%. Let's copy and paste it for the other two years. So it seems like it's pretty much constant, right? Let's look at EBIT margin. So EBIT is equal to how much? 7800 divided by 25500 so it comes out to be 30.6 percent i'll copy and paste it to see how much it is for the other two years 30.6 30.8 and 30.9 let's look at the margin at ebt level earnings before taxes okay so here it comes out to be ebt is 5700 divided by 25500 and this is 22.4 percent and 24.8 and 26.8%, okay? And finally, the net income margin. This is again very important because usually this is something which uh, or everyone tracks. So profitability margins or net income margins or net profit margins, it's one and the same, okay? So 4375 divided by 25500 and it is 17.2, 19.0 and 
20.5. So as we see that the profit margins are increasing over the years, right? So it's a healthy trend. Okay, so this is one part where we look at the historicals and how it has been performing. And the other thing that you can also look at is the balance sheet ratios, okay? And the balance sheet ratios are basically some of the ratios from liquidity point of view, like uh, the current ratio or the quick ratio and the cash ratio. And then you can also look at how is the leverage, right? Leverage would mean how much is the proportion of debt to equity, right? So that will give you how levered the company is, how much the company is relying on external debt. And uh, the other thing also you can look at is how much the return on equity or ROE. So let's uh, try to calculate each one of them. So let's start with the liquidity ratio, okay? Liquidity ratios would, as I said, we'll start with current ratio. And then we'll calculate the quick ratio. And then finally the cash ratio, okay? So what does this current ratio actually give? Current ratio is nothing but your current assets divided by current liabilities, okay? So what would this ratio gives us is that how, if your current assets are greater than current liabilities, that means you are fairly liquid, meaning that you'll be able to survive your business for one year just on the basis of your current assets. So let's look at how much is the trend. Current assets here is 5740. What's the current liabilities? 2200. Zero, zero. So this is coming out to be 2.6, right? So 2.61. So what this means is that uh, usually when it comes to current liabilities, these are the liabilities which you have to pay within the year's time frame, right? So, and current assets are those assets which you can liquidate and convert into cash within a year's time frame. So your current assets are much greater than current liabilities and therefore you are fairly liquid as far as the first actual years go. Let's look at the other two years. It's 2.65 and 2.67. So fairly liquid. Let's look at the quick ratio now. So what is quick ratio basically is that, I'll just show you with this uh, example. So here, when we looked at current ratio, we included all these three terms, right? But when you look at this inventory, now inventory is the farthest from the liquidity point of view. What I mean by this is that the inventory could be raw material inventory, right? And raw material will have to be processed. It has to convert into finished goods, right? And then finally sales will happen and then it will convert into cash. So this is fairly long process. So quick ratio would mean if I want to have cash as quick as possible, what is my situation? So we will exclude inventory from that calculation, okay? So let's do that. I'll exclude inventory and only include cash and cash equivalents and account receivables, okay? This divided by your current liabilities, that is 2200, okay? So it comes out to be 1.2. So what I see here is that uh, at the quick ratio level also, company is fairly liquid because um, it excludes inventory and still it is able to uh, pay off its liabilities, that is current liabilities. Now let's look at the cash ratio. Cash ratio is equal to cash and cash equivalents divided by your current liabilities. Okay, so here this number comes out to be 0 0.55. So almost 55% of your current liabilities you can actually pay off by yes, just using your cash and cash equivalents. So again, a healthy liquidity sign as such. Okay, so this is one part where you do the balance sheet analysis and figure out how the ratios are doing historically. Then the next thing which I said was the leverage ratio. And uh, primarily you would like to look at what is the debt to equity ratio, okay? And let's look at debt to equity ratio. How much is the total debt here? The total debt is 2100. And how much is the total equity? Equity is 9140, right? So this comes out to be 2.30. So debt is 2.30 times equity. So this is fairly leveraged, but uh, overall when it comes to the profitability and everything that uh, it comes to, like the interest payments and all, the company is able to manage that. So it's fine that debt to equity is 2.30, but uh, if it goes beyond a certain level, then uh, you know it can become an issue because of the interest payments becoming higher and higher, and it will this will prove a dent to the net income margins. But let's see how it is for the other two years. 
2.07 and 1.91. So seems like the company is trying to reduce its uh, debt levels over the years, right? So this is about leverage ratio and let's look at uh, the return on equity as well. That is ROE, okay? ROE is nothing but your return on equity. What is the return that the equity holders get? The returns that they get is basically the net income. So net income is the one that is uh, to the shareholders, right? So the formula for this ROE is nothing but net income divided by your shareholders equity. Okay, so let's do that. This will be equal to 4375 divided by your shareholders equity is 9140. So here it comes out to be, let me express this in percentage terms. This will be equal to 47.9% and then for 53.8% and 60.2%. So ROE is increasing each year, which is a very, very healthy sign. So all in all, what we see is that when it comes to the second step, which we were talking about analyzing the historical financial statements, uh, it is all about, you know, figuring out how much is the margins, how has the company been doing historically, what are the leverage ratios, liquidity ratios, ROE, and you get a good assessment of how strong the balance sheet and the income statement is, right? So as far as this company goes, it looks like, you know, it is in a reasonably healthy position, right? 